titles were so important. I learned that titles have to translate globally. You know, we can come up with the greatest title in the world. If that doesn't translate into 14 different languages, that's not a good title. We understand your strategy is to develop a logline and a synopsis. And will you try to pitch investors first or the distributors? You're asking me personally? Um, I often will come up, for me, a title is important. I, I, I get stuck in the mud without a cool title. My movies may suck, but our titles are cool. And uh, I need that. That gives me some fuel. Um, we know the stories we want to tell. Um, and synopsis is, we, we come up with, a, with an idea. What, what's, what's our idea? What's the story? And that inspires it. And we just start, you know, who are, the, who are the players? Who are the protagonists, antagonists? Who are the, you know, what's the hero's journey? What are their, what are their pitfalls and hurdles going to be? You know, what's, what's the ticking time bomb? What's gnawing at them? And then we, we go through it and, you know, break it down and start doing our development notes. And, and when I get excited about it, I, I call our investors and I say, you know, we're, we're ready. You know, we're ready to go and we know the story we want to tell. And usually it's just a paragraph that they want from us. Um, you know, th that's in, in, at least in our situation, that's what we do. We, we get to do what we want to do. We're very fortunate. So we, there's, it's, it's pretty much coming up with the story we want to tell and going and doing it and, and let ships fall where they may. You know, it kind of comes back to doing things the way you want to do them and not, not allowing people to tell you how to do things or why do things. So we're open to, you know, suggestions and stuff, but we tell the stories we want to tell and we cast the people we want to cast and we make the movies we want to make and we don't ask for permission. So if the title is very important to you, how much back and forth and disagreements have you had over titles? And has that put the kibosh on the beginning titles of the never. Sorry to cut you off. Titles have never been a problem. That's, that's one thing that I often come up with. Um, the film that we're starting in September, we, we, we had about a five second clash on a title. There were two titles that we both liked and we're going with the other one. And the more I think about it, the more cool I am with it. But um, titles, it's never been a problem. I just, when I was writing, I needed a title. I needed a title to get excited. If I didn't have a title, I couldn't be, I couldn't get excited about it. I needed to get excited about blowing smoke. I needed to get excited about, you know, double threat. I need to get excited about break even. I needed, it, once I had a title, I can just, that's all I needed. And I can just, I'm all in. Give me that title and I'm all in. You know, at least in, in my world. It's just so important to me. You know, it's everything. It's everything. And it doesn't mean my titles are great, but at least to me they are, right? I mean, we all love our children. <laughs> so the untitled Shane Stanley project is not going to work for you. No. You can't, you no. can't get no. out of bed at 2 a.m. to start typing for that. No. No. Does not. There are, there are no untitled Shane Stanley scripts or projects, I promise you. It has to have a title if it's going to get the time of day from me. Yeah. It's really important. And you seem to like shorter titles or no? I think they're easier for people to remember. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying all the titles that I've, I've had are, are winners at the end of the day, but I, I learned early, you know, I, I did a couple of films with Avi Lerner back in the day and because he sold globally, titles were so important. I learned that titles have to translate globally. You know, we can come up with the greatest title in the world. If that doesn't translate into 14 different languages, that's not a good title. And that's really important. And, you know, something that people can remember, something that people say often, you know, people say, I break even, you know, they're a double threat, you know, oh, he's just blowing smoke. You know, those are the kind of titles that, that appeal to me a lot. You know, that's just me personally. But I remember that. I remember when, when I was working with Avi, when Blockbuster and Hollywood Video were still a thing, he used to say, when you come up with a title, it's important to remember People are going to start at new releases at A and they're going to work their way to Z. Most people are done choosing by the time they get to M. Which is funny, our most successful film was with an N, no code of conduct with Avi. But that was just kind of his model in coming up with titles. So I never forgot that. And people laugh at me when I throw that out because they're like, blockbuster what? And it's different now because everything's on a thumbnail. Everybody's you know checking stuff online or 
gets promoted and doesn't matter. But that was Avi's mentality. And you think about the success Avi Lerner has had over the last 30 or 40 years of being one of the most prolific independent filmmakers in history. Um, okay, that's some advice I learned from Avi. That's one thing I'll take away from that relationship. Yeah. So I, titles are important. Something catchy, quick, simple. You know. What is it? Three billboards outside of Ebbing's Montana? I mean, but that worked. It worked. But what did everybody call it? I don't know. Three billboards. Okay. Yeah. Right. Do you see three billboards? Three. That's a tongue twister, right? <laughs> did you see billboards yet? That's what I remember. Yeah. Do you always go to a distributor first with your idea? Um, I, I run it by them. I'll run it by them. You know, I have a good relationship with, with a distributor that, um, that we have, and I, I just tell them this is what we're doing. I mean, I, I, and I don't mean that. I just, I, I, we go make the films we want to make. People can catch it or they, they don't have to. Um, we're, we're at a point where I don't care if it's, it's going into dirt with 50 grand and a couple of stolen cameras and we're going to shoot our movie. You know, fortunately, we haven't had to do that yet. But I would. That's what we were going to do with Double Threat during COVID. We we literally had fifty grand offered to us to do something during COVID, and we were we were all in. And we got fortunate, and and one of our backers was excited to hear we wanted to do something, and said, "No, let's let's do it right." But that's our mentality. We just we just want to make movies. They'll find a home. They'll find a home. So, you know, it takes time to get to that point, and it's 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 just being able to do the things you want with the people you love. And the people that are behind you, whether they're writing the check or putting the film out, get what you do. And they know what they're going to, they know what to expect with us. They know what they're going to get. So, you know, it's, I, I talked to a distributor the other day and it was, oh, you're making a movie? When do you start? September 28th. Oh, do, do, do you want to tell us what this one is? <laughs> oh, I can, sure. You know, that was the discussion. We're making it anyway. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Will you ever have a full screenplay written when you pitch distributors or only the idea? I'm not going to talk to a distributor until I'm financed. So, I mean, that's just me personally. I, I'm not going to waste anybody's time. I'm not going to call an actor. I'm not going to call anybody until we're, we're, you know, at this point where it's like, okay, yeah, we can make a movie. Um, often, you know, who reads scripts anymore? I mean, you can't get agents to read them. Lord knows they don't do that. You know, are distributors really going to read a script? No, they want to see a dumb movie. They want to know what you're doing. You know, they're just going to throw it to somebody for coverage. And if you're making your movies based on coverage, I think that's a bad thing. Some of the greatest movies in history got covered so poorly. Some of the worst movies in history were some of the greatest coverage films. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it, who's reading and who's covering? Um, sometimes coverage is done out of respect. Well, somebody will say, well, we want to take this out. Um, we'd like to take a look at it and get some coverage on it. Okay. And they usually call back and say, you checked all the boxes. It's, it's fine. Go, go have fun. Go do it. But that's, that's not how we make movies. It's, it's not about committee. It's, it takes a team. But we, our job is to make the film. And it's not our job to distribute or sell it. And we have a mutual respect where you know what you're going to get when we do something. And I know what to expect from you when you're going to put it out. And I won't tell you how to you do your job. Let me do mine. And that's the relationships that we like to have with our distributors and, and sales agents. And it's just, it's just, you know, it comes from time, time, and time. It's been beating the bag for, you know, producing films for over 30 years. You, you can, you know, get to a situation with some people that are willing to trust you. And it's about trust. It's about doing films. And another reason I'm an indie rat is I like, I don't, I don't put our investors at, at risk, you know, make the movie for what it can get made for. So the, 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 the stakes are low. So people aren't, you know, you're not ending up wearing cement shoes in two years because, you know, you couldn't give something away that costs millions of dollars. I mean, it happens all the time. That's not how we make our movies. We make our movies, we punch way above our weight class. We, we way out kick our punk coverage on these things. We get great cast, great crew. We make them look as good as we can. It's a Roger Corman idea. It's the same mentality. I mean, how many films did Roger Corman kick out? You know, it's, it's just about doing what we love and getting them done and, and having fun and giving, giving people content. That's our job, and um, I, I don't like to overcomplicate it. I, I will, I will never go to a distributor without a script. I mean, there's nothing to talk about if there's no money. You know, I, I don't talk to them until it's it's we're financed, we're ready to go, and then we're making it. That's just that's just the the timeline of what we do now. <laughs>